Realtor income is one of the most established REITs on the US market. Any day now, we're expecting Realty Income to announce its 638 consecutive monthly dividend. The company has been around for over 50 years and has raised dividends 121 times. It's no wonder that Realty Income is the favorite of many dividend growth investors. In fact, it is one of the few REITs that has outperformed the S&P over the last 30 years. However, as investors, we want to look forward, not backwards. I don't care how the company did last year or five years ago. I care about how the company is doing now and where the business is going. Realty Income released earnings last week. If you look at the price action, you will think that they delivered bad results, but that's actually not the case. Realty Income showed firms from operations of $1.02 per share, which met analysts' expectations. Meanwhile, the revenue of $1.02 billion exceeded expectations by $105 million and grew by 25.9% as compared to last year. If we look at some of the other highlights, we can see that they invested another $3.1 billion in 710 properties. They also raised about $2.2 billion from the sale of common stock at an average price of $61.89. Given the current price of $58.6, the company has actually created shareholder value by selling this stock. They've also issued $1 billion worth of bonds at an interest rate of 4.7 to 4.9%, maturing at December 2028 and July 2033. Realty Income also slightly raised its guidance for FFO in 2023 to between $4.07 and $4.15. They expect a 1.25% growth in same-store rent and an occupancy rate of at least 98% for the whole year. During the last three months, the actual occupancy rate was 99%. In fact, this is the third quarter in a row with 99% occupancy, which is a great thing to see. Obviously, high occupancy is important for a REIT because empty properties mean expenses without income, and that's not something we want to see as investors. Now. Let's look at some of the other important metrics for REITs. Tangible book value per share was $31.28, which was the sixth consecutive quarterly increase. It's almost 10% higher than the same quarter last year. The debt to equity ratio was 72.7%, down from last quarter's 74.2%, but up from last June's 70.4%. Realty Income's debt to equity ratio has fluctuated between 70 and 75% over the last few years, so that's nothing out of the ordinary. Rates tend to have a higher debt to equity ratio anyway. That's just part of the business model. Finally, in terms of adjusted FFO growth, the management is expecting roughly 1.8% growth for 2023. Admittedly, that's not a lot. Latest US CPI numbers came in at 3.2%, so Realty Income's FFO growth is below inflation. In fact, it's also well below the historical growth rate for Realty Income, so the company is showing signs of slowing down, which makes us wonder whether they can actually sustain their typical growth. Obviously, we need to remember that the interest rates have been rising quickly though, and that tends to complicate things for REITs. Still, Realty Income is showing growth, and that's important. Plus, we need to bear in mind that the dividend is stable, reliable, and growing. Currently, Realty Income's dividend yield is 5.23%, which is historically high for the REIT. It is expected to grow by 2% annually over the next three years, which is again below inflation. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, it is one of the most established REITs on the US market, and you always pay a dividend for that type of security. I personally think that the current price provides a good investment case. Realty Income is one of those stocks which help you sleep safe at night. Grabbing it when it offers a 5.2% dividend is simply a good opportunity. There are some risks involved, obviously, Realty income is definitely not a momentum stock right now, as we can see in this chart. The price has barely moved in the last 5 years, so if you are looking for price appreciation, this may not be the one for you. The stock price is trading well below the 10, 50 day, 100 day and 200 day simple moving averages. This sideways trend may continue given the challenging interest rate conditions in the US. Things could get better for realty income if the Federal Reserve stops raising interest rates, but only time will tell us how the market will react once that happens. Apart from that, the other main risk in my personal opinion is the potential bubble in real estate. 
Everyone talks at length about real estate being in a bubble. That could be a massive problem for real to income, obviously, since the company is essentially a massive portfolio of real estate. However, the biggest bubble is in office building valuation. The work from home shift has really had an impact on their fair price valuations and that's the type of real estate most investors are avoiding right now. Realty Income, however, does not own office buildings, or if they do, it's a very small percentage of their total portfolio. Their main clients are convenience stores, grocery stores, door stores, home improvement stores, drug stores, restaurants, health and fitness, automotive services, general merchandise, and so on. In fact, 82.5% of their portfolio is retail and 13.1% is industrial. There is no one client that accounts for more than 4% of their total portfolio either. Also, bear in mind that Realty Income survived the great financial crisis without having to stop or lower dividends. The company really is resilient. There is a lot more that I can say about the company, but I'll summarize it like this. It's a stable, reliable company that pays a growing monthly dividend. It will not make you a millionaire overnight, but it's a great way to get exposure to the real estate sector. I think it's perfect for a dividend growth portfolio, especially at the current price. That's just my opinion though. What do you think? Is realty income a buy at this price? Or would you rather get something else? Let me know in the comments below. Please like and share this video around if you found it interesting. And I will see you again in the next one.